In 2020, we got to marvel at Jags expected Jigba's first touchdown pass of his career, and it came from Justin Fields, an amazing quarterback who was in Chicago doing some wonderful things. Well, have you thought about the likelihood of those two players reuniting with the Bears in the National Football League? Oh, this isn't a crazy thought. This could really happen. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. What's up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes. For the Locked on Podcast and Network, I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast, It is Tuesday, March 21st in the year 2023, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. During this episode, we'll discuss what will go down tomorrow during Ohio State's Pro Day and the possibility of Cody Simon getting more playing time in the upcoming season. But before we get to any of that, The NFL draft, it's right around the corner, literally about four or five weeks from now. And we're going to be getting the pro day from Ohio State tomorrow. But we're also going to be getting more speculation about what certain NFL teams will be doing that are drafting in the first round. Particularly in the top 15. There are three Buckeye players that many people think will be top 15 picks. Two for sure. A third might join the bunch. C.J. Stroud. Paris Johnson Jr., they seem to be locks. And then Jackson Smith and Jigba seems to be the wild card. With him being the wild card, people start thinking maybe the Bears moving back to number nine, getting rid of the number one overall pick, that might be a spot that in Jigba goes. Who is the quarterback for the Chicago Bears? Justin Fields. Who was a teammate of Justin Fields in college? Jackson Smith and Jigba. Now, they didn't get to play much football together. I want to say Jigba only had 11 catches, and that may be uh, a stretch. That might be too many catches for him during that season. But he didn't have that many. But what would would be amazing? What would be these two players reuniting in the NFL? This information is coming from a mock draft that I saw via CBS Sports. Kyle Stackpole put it together. He is the NFL draft editor for CBS Sports, and he actually has four Buckeyes going in the first round. He has C.J. Stroud going number two overall to the Houston Texans. He has Jackson Smith and Jigba going number nine overall to the Chicago Bears. He has Paris Johnson Jr. going number 11 overall to the Tennessee Titans, and he has Dewan Jones going number 24 overall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Two of these guys are the first guys at their position taken off the board. And Jake was the first receiver. Paris Johnson Jr. is the first offensive tackle. The second quarterback taken off the board is C.J. Stroud. Number one is Bryce Young going to the Carolina Panthers. And then Dewan Jones, the fourth tackle taken off the board, going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's amazing. The four Buckeyes are going in the first round. I still don't think Dewan Jones is a first-round pick. Second-round pick is still great. But what would be even better and greater is in Jigba and Justin Fields going and reuniting once, once again in the Midwest playing football in the National Football League. Now, them re- reuniting would be great. And it, it makes a lot of sense. If you haven't looked at the Chicago Bears' Jeff chart lately, they are looking to add some pieces to the pie to get more skilled players out there for Justin Field just added DJ Moore. They got Darnell Moody. Uh, Mooney, they have Chase Claypool. Didn't play much last year. So they're looking to add some guys. And if you get a guy in Jigba, his shiftiness, his craftiness, his ability to be able to fly in the hole while playing the slot at a high level, get there, catch the ball, and then get upfield and get those yak yards, those are things that are going to help Justin Fields play longer in the National Football League because that man cannot keep running like he has been. No, 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 no. He can't do it. And eventually caught up to Michael Vick and Michael Vick ended up getting injured. And Michael Vick was a better runner of the football at the quarterback position than Justin Fields was. So Justin Fields knows he cannot keep running like this. Well, how does an organization help a player 
protect himself from himself, especially a quarterback, get more weapons around him. But it's not all about the weapons. They got to add some offensive linemen. Now, do I believe the Bears will? I mean, my belief in the Bears is not as strong as my belief in some other NFL teams because the Bears have just not done that lately. But it can happen. I will not say no. I would never say never. It can happen. And I would love, I would absolutely love to turn on the NFL, turn on the TV on a Sunday afternoon and see and Jigba and Fields on the field together and to see more of that connection that we didn't see very much during 2020. But when it was out there, when it's on when it's out there on full display and Jigba's healthy and Fields is ready to lock and load and sling that ball all around the yard to see these two guys together. The Buckeye Brotherhood is one of the most special things in college football. Yes, growing up for me, and I'm going to go back to my childhood here, not talk about a team uh, in the NFL. But to me, growing up, the, the brotherhood that I loved was all those players from Miami, all those Hurricanes. I loved hearing the stories about how they would go back down there to Coral Gables and they would work out together. They'd be there with the players. They worked, they, they would uh, try to get the football team right. And they would talk about, hey, how can we get this thing great? That was my childhood. But even better than that, is seeing all these former Buckeye players come together and say, hey, man, we can do this. We can get this done. We got to stick together. I love seeing on Twitter, even during bad moments of football from the Buckeyes, the former Buckeye players, Gary on Conley and others, go out there and say, hey, this ain't it. Maybe we need to pull up to the Woody. Maybe we need to pull up and show them how to really coach, show them how to really play. Now, these are the players taking ownership of the program, and I love it. I would also love to have Jigba and Fields play in Chicago together. There will be growing pains. There will be some rough patches of play for Jigba. I am not going to come out of here and say it's going to be smooth sailing for him all throughout his NFL career. I am not that guy. I'm, I'm not that. I'm not going to make a statement like that because it wouldn't make any sense. Everybody has some rough times during their career. Think back to someone that I watched growing up, Peyton Manning. 3-13 and 13 to 13-3. 13 and three. Think that 3-13 and 13 was fun? Absolutely not. That 13-3 and three was, and then what came next? A lot of times getting knocked out at the one game in the NFL playoffs. Growing pains, man, they're going to happen. It's going to happen for Jigba. Now, it may be a little bit easier for him if he has a quarterback that's doing the ball in college, throw him the ball in the NFL. That will make things a whole lot better. But that's TBD to be determined. This mock draft, the first thing I saw was, hey, is it post-trade of Carolina and Chicago? And it was. And then I saw in Jigba. A reunited, a, a Buckeye reunion in Chicago, it could actually happen. This isn't just a statement Jay is saying on this show. No, there is some validity to this, what we're talking about here on this show. What's going to come up tomorrow, and we'll discuss it on tomorrow's show, is Ohio State's Pro Day. We'll discuss the players. We'll discuss everything that's going to happen and what we can expect more on that day. But let's get a little early look at what can happen in tomorrow's Pro Day. Here, next, on Locked Up Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The tournament is heating up, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. We are all looking forward to Ohio State's Pro Day. Tomorrow, it'll be going down in the woody. Players like Jackson Smith and Jigba, C.J. Stroud, Paris Johnson Jr., Ronnie Hickman, 
Cam Brown. They will all be putting on display their skill set. They will all be putting on display what they have been working on since they've been playing football. And especially since they've been playing at the Ohio State University, it'll also give NFL coaches more of a chance, another opportunity to see these players in a setting that's on the football field. Pro days are fun. Think about being a player. The interview process to get drafted, it's a long, extensive one. It's a very long period. It's the, one of the weirdest things you could ever think of when it comes to an interview for a player, for a person. You mean to tell me I could go back to my childhood and ask me questions about that during this interview? Yeah, you can't. You mean you talk, you talk to my third grade teacher? How'd you do that? I mean, they got ways to get around and ask people questions. It, it's, it's one of the oddest things to think about. What's also odd and possibly odder is that people's minds can be shifted, maybe slightly shifted in a positive or negative way based off what you do here. Remember the pro, excuse me, remember the combine we came on here and talked about how there are players such as Cam Brown, Ronnie Hickman, who did not do on field drills, did not run the 40, didn't do anything like that. We were sitting here discussing why. Why didn't they do that? Did it make any sense? Why didn't make any sense? Well, those players are going to be under another microscope, another microscope here, because if they don't perform again and we're coming to your home field, what are you hiding from us? We all see the film. We all see what you're doing. We all see the things that make you the player who you are. And if you're going to allow us to come here to your home and to all of a sudden not perform, that's going to be a maybe a red flag and provide more questions for you as a player. When it comes to Njigba and Stroud, I will let you know this today. I have read, this came via a report and an article from Buck, Casey Smith from Buckeyes Now, a fan nation site. Njigba and Stroud are planning on running the 40 at the pro day. It will not be an electronic time like at the NFL Combine. No, they're running it at the pro day. Maybe that's just, hey, we want to give you the last taste of us. We want to do it here. Okay, cool. Great. Cool. Cool. Absolutely. Fine. Great. Do it. Okay. Stroud is a player that he can actually wow some people. It may do move up to the number one spot, be the solid pick at number one. If he comes in, let's just say CJ Stroud was a four, five, eight. I don't think it's going to happen. I absolutely do not. Or let's just say CJ Stroud comes in. He could probably run a four, five, eight. Let me change that. Let's say CJ Stroud runs in and comes in and runs a four, four, eight. That I don't believe is going to happen. Now, if he comes in and runs a four, four, eight, that's going to give more validity to what people saw during the game against Georgia, and then it's going to come the question, why do we only see it one game? Now, you saw him run for 50-plus yard touchdown run, his first touchdown of his career in 2020 against Michigan State. We all, many of us remember that play, and we're thinking we're going to see that from Stroud during his tenure being Ohio State starting quarterback. That didn't happen. But if he comes in and runs a 4-4-8, cool. If he comes in and runs a 4-5-8 or even a 4-6-6, okay, I you're not slow, 498 or uh 491 or 487. Like you're not a slower player, but you can move a little bit. Like a 458 uh, uh 40 for CJ Stroud, that's probably locked in. Now I do think in Jigba, probably a 465, uh maybe a 468, not it's not for football players that is or receiver. A lot of receivers run four six, maybe four six one to four six nine. A lot of them run four sixes. It's just what they do. Now, in Jigba on the field does not play 4-6. So cool. Straight line speed in shorts and a t-shirt and get some uh running shoes on, some running cleats on. That is absolutely great. But when I turn on the tape, I don't see 4-6 from from, from in Jigba. I also don't see 4-3. I may see a four, uh, a high 4-4, four, four, maybe a 4-8 or 4-9. And you're like, oh boy, oh boy, okay, okay, okay. So we're seeing things on the field from Jigbo where he's able to um, have more of that football speed. That's great. That's an absolute amazing thing. And so if he runs a slower 40, if I'm the NFL people, I'm saying disregard that. Absolutely disregard that. No, no, no. We're not going to put much stock into that right there. No, what are we going to put stock in? The thing that he's done on the field that made him a household name that allowed him to break records at and during the Rose Bowl, why? Because that is the Jigba that we love. That is the Jigba that we got to see play at Ohio State. 
in 2021. There were other players. And I'm going to close now. I, I, I'm going to just – I want to plan on doing this. This is a huge moment for Zach Harrison. An amazingly huge moment. He is a player that I do believe can actually make some money tomorrow. Like, I'm not just making this statement to make some statements to fill some space. I firmly, firmly believe that Zach Harrison is a player that if he comes out and he runs, now he wants to run fast. Okay, cool. If he runs a decent 40, a decent 40 for him, was he 6'5", 270? If he runs a decent 40 or an above average 40, great. If you're showing agility and quickness, great. If you're showing great movements over the bags, great. You are a player, and I normally don't say guys can make some money, but when I have to see Zach Carrison play, I don't really think he is an early day two guy. I don't really think he's a day two pick at all. But there's going to be somebody out there that's at this pro day that wants to take a chance on a player and says, Zach Carrison's a guy I want to take a chance on. Zach Carrison's a guy that we saw some growth for, uh, during his uh, last two years at Ohio State, especially the last year where he played the best ball at Ohio State. We want to take a chance on a player. And ultimately, Zach Harrison, if he comes out here, if his hamstring is not tweaked, if he comes out here healthy, if he comes out here and actually is able to do some amazing things as Jody was on the football field, we could see a Zach Harrison that could move up to maybe the fourth round of this draft. I don't think he's a fourth round pick, uh, maybe more of a fifth round pick because when you add in every body that's getting drafted from all levels of football, there will be some D2 guys or D3 guys that end up getting drafted. Zach Harrison has to really prove himself. And this is a great opportunity. Didn't get to see the on-field drills from him during the combine. Let's see them here. Here, He is someone who is expected to, expected to test well. Comes in in shape, test out of this world, and does great on the on-field drills. Zach Harrison, you might find somebody there you have a one-on-one conversation with that says, hey, because of what you did, did today, we're going to uh, put more stock and think more about drafting you in the NFL draft. Zach Harris, a great opportunity for you. It's a great opportunity for every Buckeye that will be participating in Ohio State's Pro Day in 2023. There's one player at Ohio State who could see more playing time. He's a linebacker. I want to tell you why he should see more playing time. It's Cody Simon. After yesterday's show, you might say, Jay, it's not going to make any sense. Let me explain why it'll make sense next right here on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. Billiards Plus also can set you up with a brand new top-of-the-line grill that will last for generations. We all know how hard it is with the supply chain issues this year and getting certain things shipped on time. So when it comes to ordering that one big gift for someone you love, check out Billiards Plus and get there early this year. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Olhausen, Canada, Billiards, and more. Plus, top-of-the-line grills from PK, Napoleon, Memphis, and LaGriddle. That will be the last grill you own. Seriously, these grills stand the test of time. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Visit the showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Check them out at billiards-plus.com. Billiards Plus, family owned and operated for generations. Sports betting is now legal in Ohio. And Locked On has the perfect show to help new and seasoned gamblers. Download and subscribe to Locked On Bets for daily picks and analysis wherever you get your fine podcasts. Cody Simon. Now, many of you that listened or watched yesterday's show may remember me talking about why I don't believe it's wise for Ohio State to rotate linebackers in the upcoming season. That does not mean I don't think there is a time period for them to play three linebackers. And Cody Simon comes to mind. I do believe Cody Simon is the next linebacker up, especially with Eichenberg not getting reps and not participating in spring practice. That's more reps, more playing time for Cody Simon. And Cody Simon is a player that I believe should get more playing time in 2023, especially on defense. And here is why. When you think about Ohio State's defense, 
When you think about college football, when you think about any level of football, you know there are times you need to have a heavier set. Some teams might run a traditional uh, a 4-2-5 defense or base set with two linebackers, and there were times you need a third linebacker out there to beef things up. And that's not always in the red zone. That could also be in the middle of the field, short yard situations, maybe fourth and one. Someone's coming out and they do a QB sneak a lot of the time. Oh, bring a third linebacker in there. Oh, how about we come out 50 yard line, literally in the middle of the field, and they're going to come out third and two, but they're bringing a heavier set. You need a little beefier unit in there. You don't want to bring in a beefier unit and add a, a fifth defensive lineman, but you want to bring in a third linebacker. In come Cody Simon. So the short yardage situations at Ohio State, I do believe are perfect for Ohio State to bring in a third linebacker. There are also going to be teams in the Big Ten. The schedule's not right in front of me, but Wisconsin, Iowa, those are the two that come into, into my mind. Also, Northwestern, if Ohio State plays him in the upcoming season, those are teams that are going to get some heavier offensive sets. Personnel groupings. They get two tight ends, three tight ends, occasionally a four tight end. You may get a fullback in two tight ends. You may get a fullback in three tight ends. You're going to need beefier people in there. Income Cody Simon. Yes, in some of those situations, you might add another defensive lineman, but also another linebacker, that's going to be needed as well. In comes Cody Simon. I've already tried to insert him in every now and then in this conversation. I hear all the conversations about C.J. Hicks. Tell me who played more last year. Tell me the third linebacker at Ohio State who got the third most, third most snaps at linebacker. Now, not just last year, but tell me who Jim Knowles is saying should get more, will probably get more playing time in the upcoming season. Like, I get last year. That's in the past. What's going on present day is Cody Simon is literally the next man up. I think he should get a lot more time. Red zone, hey, if you're 20 yards on in, put him in there. Like, what's going to hurt? Like, you should have good enough DBs. You should have good enough players. You can put insert a third linebacker and, and, and be just fine and be, be a okay. It should happen. So, Cody Simon, great. But also, I expect Cody Simon to be all over special teams. All over kickoff, punt team, punt return team, maybe <coughs> all over the place. Why? If Jim knows talking about him like this in this way right now in March, think about what Ryan Day and Parker Fleming are having conversations about when it comes to players who have been here for a while that have shown that they can do certain things very, very well and that are kind of Swiss Army knives and have the proper mindset. Buddy, that's Cody Simon. And so I hear all the conversations, I hear all the talk, I hear all the stuff about players who should be playing more. Cody Simon, to me, at linebacker, or just in general, deserves more playing time and should be on the field, maybe more than most people think, during the upcoming season. Cody Simon still needs to prove it. Like, he still needs to remind us, everybody, in the spring, you got a scrimmage coming up this weekend at Ohio State, close to the public. Hey, I believe it's close to the public. Go show all your coaches what you can do. Spring game, when the public will be there, show everybody what you can do. Because if you do that and take advantage of these reps, buddy, Cody Simon can be somebody we could be talking about in September, October, about a Buckeye that's not a non-starter who is wowing us on the football field. Out of here on a Tuesday. Glad to be back with you. Pro Day tomorrow. Got more Buckeye talk coming here for you right here on Locked on Buckeyes throughout the rest, the rest of the week. You can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. Send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. The feel good. It's a fresh cut. Feel good. The fresh cut confidence is in full effect today. Just got a cut before coming behind the mic here with you on this show. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. I want Buckeye football. Just got to wait a few more weeks until we get it.